Well, we are over at Bessie's tonight, and Mr. M is with us. His uh, shipment of batteries has arrived, and Mr. M is here to uh, train me on the usage of said batteries. And we're also uh, being very industrious at Betsy's uh, distillery. So if you're thinking that um, there won't be any alcohol at the August 21st party, wrong. Specialty. And yeah, look at this. Sealed with the seeker emblem. See y'all there. So Mr. M's working on our DC breaker panel. This is the connection between the AC and the DC because the DC battery supplies power to our inverters. It goes through these massive four rod cables and through those DC breakers and then over to the inverters. And the breakers and the inverters are all of donation out of Wisconsin. Somebody at Y2K, you know, thought the world was gonna come to the end and prep for it. God, I love those people. That is a nice tool. Sweet. How big a cable will that do? About uh, MCM 250. MCM 250. What the heck's MCM 250? It's two size bigger than that. This is uh, four out. Yeah, yeah. They so make up to uh, MCM 550, which would be like four times as big as that. Oh my gosh. There is a uh, human capacity for imagination, but it's good and bad. You know, human imagination gets things done like the creation of this boat. But when you have a potential problem, it also can be one of those things that just holds us back. And there was a transmission oil in the bottom of this thing, and I could not figure out where it was coming from. Looked around with a camera, put paper underneath it, finally, you know, it's like it's down there somewhere, right? Turns out. And your imagination takes you to, oh, I'm going to have to change out the rear seal and then it uh, can't possibly be the rear seal, it's beyond the bulkhead, so it's got to be something, in, oh, it's got to be the front seal of the transmission. You know, you think, what's the worst possible thing? There's the drips. Slip over that side. Yeah, I think it's the drain plug. That would be a very easy thing. I love fixes like that. That's the nearest drip. I didn't even know they had drip plug over here. I thought it was on. It's loose. Oh my God. I tell you what, sometimes life is just easy. Oh, loose drain plug. You know, so don't let imagination work against you. Let it work for you. So now we just put a little bit more transmission fluid in. We're good to go. Going right into some sort of steel oh, tree. I love George at the jump. I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. Does that one not stick to something? Yeah, I think it does. You got to have steel around. So, those are the connections going from these inverters here to the electrical panel. So, we're going to pull 110 off this one and 110 off this one up here. And then there's a port up here, that one right there, a little plug in cable thing. We can actually join one inverter to the other. And that way they make 220 volts so it uh, syncs them together so that they're out of phase with each other so you get 220. so let me get a nice shot of this so matthew can see what's back here back there is a brand new lithium iron phosphate battery straight from, straight from uh, darpa research facilities courtesy of mr m This stuff is not dielectric grease. It's anti-oxidation, but it actually helps conduct electricity between the lug and the cable. So don't squirt it everywhere, but you don't want to put uh, dielectric grease on a cable that you're tightening down into a lug. That would be uh, counterproductive. Yeah, it oozes right up, doesn't it? The, the antiox also creates an anti-seize environment, so you can pull the lug off later. Oh, that's good.
Now, if you notice, we are handling the chains around the lugs, and one of the interesting features of this battery is the battery management system is built inside, and it has these powered off until you plug a controller in and tell it, okay, it's good to turn on. Now, Richard Day is back with us from uh, 42 Fab, putting together the harness for the controller. So. I'll never get the good jobs when I come here. Oh, yeah, this, is a, this is a sweet job. We got the easy job today. It connects the battery to the controller, and that's what gets to turn the battery on. Now, connect into this the user interface module, which will probably go right there. And these things are DC to DC converters. Uh, Greg Cotton donated them to us 12 volt off the 24 volt because that beast out there puts out 24 volts. And 24 is what we use the most of because those two pumps down there for the hydraulic system are 24 volt. And those will be the motors that supply the hydraulic force for the rudder. These cylinders back here, and they're controlled by the autopilot so the boat can steer itself. And Matthew is putting the bus bars in on the back side of all those breakers. That little set over there is 24 volt. The rest of these are 12 volt. So through a breaker off the 24 to the DC to DC converters and back up to feed the 12 volt ramp. Look at that. How pretty is that? It does have a temp sensor. I don't know why it's showing 1.6, but. I was doing it before I messed with it, so. Yeah. I doubt that. Okay, lithium battery is on, 24 to 12 volt is on, the 12 volt bank is good to go. Go ahead and hit our lights over there. Matthew will turn the lights off, and if the photo cell works, yeah it does, the night lights come on through here. Okay, so that's all working. And now, let's see, one of these is the pumps down there for the 12 volt. I'm just going to jog them. I don't want them to run very long. What was that? Did you hear it? I heard a rumble. Is it down there that it's coming from? Yeah. Did you? I'm assuming that that's the I heard rumble. a rumble too. I heard a rumble. Lift that tile up and look down this there. This one? Yeah. It's one of those big pumps down there. Okay. Is that it? Oh, no. It's a pump down here. Yeah, it's a pump with the water maker, okay. All right, so that's not the right pump. That's nah, not the right, so then maybe that's the next one. Here we go. No, I don't think that's it. I hear something else. Is. For the hydraulic pump? Yeah, the hydraulic pumps. Nothing? No. Nope. Nothing? Okay, I'm going to have to work on this. But I'm going to do it tomorrow when it's not 100 degrees. 88 is the high temperature tomorrow. That's when we trigger the hydraulic pumps. Not that one. Turn it off. Yeah, now it's there you go. Okay, so those are those pumps. Okay, the clicking noise is the clutch on the pump. There it is. Yeah, I can see it moving. That's the clutch for the hydraulic. big hydraulic pump. All right, we're good. All right, let's go to your other panels. This is nice too. The other panels come in and they tie out to these breakout boxes. So we can go in here and get uh, negative 24 volt or 12 volt. So we can easily uh, you know, add other equipment in here temporarily. Oh, the inverters are on. Did you know that? I knew that. I need to uh, finish reading the manual so I can program them to actually invert tomorrow. All right. So one tomorrow, tomorrow is inversion morning. Tomorrow is inversion morning. All I can do right now is sweat, and the fan is coming back on because you guys can't hear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah, those are the blowers for the engine room. Okay, yeah, it's all working. Gruntled. It's actually kind of comfy back in here. Matthew did the hard work. He read the manual last night. And it did put you to sleep, didn't it? It did. Okay. And a little check with video to make sure that those wires are in. And no copper showing out of them. That looks good. Okay. And this is a ribbon cable that connects the uh, top inverter to the bottom one so that they can uh, cooperate in making single phase into 220 Oop, upside down i need to get some screws in here to make that not wiggle out of there with vibrations too oh damn bug okay we're out here to see the boat 
in the dark. So we got our mood lighting on. And when we turn off these white lights, our night lights ought to come on. This is uh, Carl. Carl. Carl's from Massachusetts. Massachusetts on a motorcycle. You know, one of those guys that travels the United States on a motorcycle doing IT jobs. There we go, that's dark. Oh, wait a minute. You don't have the battery on yet, do you? No, I didn't. Alright. turn the battery on first. This is so strange, a battery that we turn on a battery. Push the little button, there we go. Breaker's on. 60%. Oh, red LED, okay. I'm gonna figure out a better. There we go, that should be the LED light. There we go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm a good test pilot for the night lights because I've never walked around here before. Yeah, yeah. If, you, yeah, if the new guy can walk around without tripping or falling in a hole, it's all good. Maybe in his own bathroom, but. Well, we feel around for the toilet. Yeah, yeah. it's a little dangerous. We're not going to ever close the door. <laughs> I mean, it's, you can, but in this sure. dark, why would you? Right. How many LEDs do you have in the rear cabin? Uh, just one. Just the one. Yeah. Whoa. Let's see. And I got one up in the companion way. Over there. That's why it's lit up so bright. Honestly, it's cool. It's good in red. It looks very good in red. Right, they haven't been programmed yet. All right, there, yeah. Okay, that is lights coming off your battery. I'm so proud of you, it's like <gasps> you're giving birth. Oh, done. Oh, well. It is set up, it's working. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll charge, and I'll be a happy camper if I leave that battery at 100%. Oh, well, don't set your hopes too high. <laughs> Seven bolts in at 14 amps. We're a little under 25%. 100%!